Let's talk about the holy grail of time-lapse photography, day-to-night and night-to-day transitions. The basic idea for doing this is to just change your camera parameters like exposure, ISO and even the aperture while shooting in order to stay inside the dynamic range of your camera sensor. This idea was already introduced by me a couple of years ago and our time-lapse has always been the tool to compensate for those changes in brightness in order to provide a silky smooth sequence at the end. Let me show you an example. Our time-lapse loads the sequence and the blue curve as always shows the brightness progression, the luminosity of the single images. So as you can see while it gets darker in nature the curve goes down and eventually there is a small bump. This is where I've changed the exposure on the camera from one fifth of a second to one fourth of a second as you can see in the table. When we progress through the sequence here it gets quite dark and I've changed again from one fourth to 0 0.3 then to 0 0.4 then to 0 0.5 and um, this is not perfect in terms of shooting technique. Normally I recommend to have even adjustments every couple of frames, one third stop adjustment, but sometimes things happen in practice and I will show you that the Holy Grail Wizard in LR Timelapse will even deal perfectly with, with sequences that have not been perfectly shot. You can see that we have lots of adjustments here and each one leads to a small flicker, a small jump in the brightness of the sequence. The reason for this is that we have this area where we have a perfect exposure of the raw files and if I didn't have made those adjustments the luminosity curve would have gone like this and the images would have turned out black very quickly. Adjusting the camera frequently is the tool to keep your images inside the dynamic range of your camera. Okay, let's start to correct all this in LR time-lapse. As always, we use our visual workflow. We go from left to right, we create our keyframes and now you can see, unlike in the basic tutorial, now we get some small orange triangles as keyframes as well. They show where the adjustments of the camera settings have being made. In this case, for example, from ISO 160 to ISO 200. You don't have to care too much about those small orange triangles. A lot of time notes will deal with them automatically. Now we just decide how many keyframes we would like. I will do six keyframes here because we have quite a lot of changes in the colors and contrasts and so on of our sequence. The next step then is the holy grail wizard. Just click on it and you will instantly get the correction curve calculated here and this is basically a mirrored curve of the blue luminosity curve. This correction curve added to the blue curve will result in this smooth curve. The only option that you have is the rotate slider here and it will just do what the name says. It will rotate the holy grail adjustments. Normally it's not necessary to rotate it at all, but should you get a curve like this or like this, just make sure that you bring the compensation curve as close to the horizontal center line as you can with the rotate slider. Okay, let's save and now we go to Lightroom as I explained in the basic workflow. I drag the sequence to my Lightroom library. The importer comes up. I make sure that add has been selected. Then I click on import. This is our sequence. And while it's still importing, we can already choose our filter, set it to LRT5 keyframes. The keyframes will start coming in and we can instantly start developing. I will do some very basic adjustments here. 
to reduce the dynamics, lowering the highlights, increasing the shadows, adding a little bit of contrast with the whites and blacks. This is what I call the dynamic D for dynamic processing. And now I increase the exposure a little bit, especially at the beginning of the image, I will have a brighter exposure. Let me add a gradient. When you work with gradients with LR time lapse, you will get four predefined linear gradients. Please make sure to always use one of those gradients and not create new ones or delete existent gradients because that would mess up with the workflow. Okay, this gradient here, I can move it, I can rotate it, I can even uh, delete some areas with the brush here and so on. You can basically do anything with those gradients. You can animate them across the keyframes. This will give you a lot of power when processing your time lapses. I just will make the sky a little bit darker and increase the dehaze a little bit on the sky to increase the contrast on the clouds a little bit. Of course you can do more, but I will leave it like this and now shift click on the second keyframe, use my script to synchronize. Especially when working with holy grail sequences, please make sure to always use the script and not Lightroom's sync mechanism here. This one just looks nice as it is. So I will pass on to the next one. Again, use my script, bring the settings over here. This looks nice too. Let's do the next one. Okay, this is cool, but it's a little bit too bright. So I will start decreasing my exposure a little bit. Decrease the blacks a little bit. But this is just an example, obviously. Let's do go over to the next one. Okay, this is too bright as well, because now it's already starting to get dark and I have this magenta tint that I will just remove. Okay, let's bring those settings to the last keyframe. A bit too bright and now I will lower the whites as well because otherwise my lights will blow and we need to get more blue here, I guess. Now it's important to go to the grid view again select the whole sequence with Control A or Command A, save metadata as usually, and now we can go back to LR time lapse. We end up in the second workflow row. We reload, we do the auto transition, we start the visual previews. I'll speed this up a little bit. And once the visual previews are finished, we click on visual deflicker. And again, this will give us the smooth target curve for deflicker, where you can now set the smoothness with this slider. This time I'm going to use the multiplast deflicker because I guess it's a lot of deflicker work to do. I will just limit this to two passes and let the accuracy on default. The accuracy just tells LR time lapse how close it has to match the green target curve. Click on apply and again, I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you. Pass one is now finished and you can see that after this single path, we already have a very, very smooth sequence and only at the positions where we still have some small bumps, the second path will now get active and try to smooth these small bumps with great success because after the second path, you get a perfect smooth transition curve here. So let's play back our visual previews and you can see that with this very easy editing and all our time lapses, great tools, you've got a very perfect day to night transition. The rest of the workflow is exactly as I explained it 
in the basic tutorial you go to Lightroom you read the metadata for the whole sequence then you export via LR Timelapse export plugin and once finished this will be handed over to LR Timelapse again where the renderer starts up and completes your time-lapse clip. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I wish you a lot of fun with LR Timelapse 5. Please share your results in the forum. Post any questions that you might have there too because we have a very active community and I'm reading and writing there on a daily basis. That's the best way to get in contact. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.